Hi, I'm Marius. I'm a Galaxy developer. Today I will walk you through the workflow parameters tutorial. And I will first show you how to um, use simple parameters. Then I will show you how you can take a parameter and create other parameters from it. And then I'll show you how to read parameters from a data set um, so that you can calculate things in your workflow and then uh, use the values that you've calculated in the next step. All right, so let's pull up the training material. So the tutorial is under using Galaxy and managing your data, uh, workflows using workflow parameters. All right. So yeah, I mean, you probably know that workflows are a really cool feature in Galaxy and you can easily and quickly uh, put steps together. And um, in order to reuse the workflow, you want to parameterize it. So think of your workflow as a sort of program and you want to define your inputs, your outputs, um, and parameters are an important uh, part of this. And specifically, we're talking about non-data set uh, parameters here, like text parameters, integer values, float values, booleans, false true, colors, um, and more parameters uh, that we will add later. All right, so for the interest of time, this workflow starts from an uh, existing workflow. Um, so we got to import this particular workflow. So let's copy the link right here. Um, go to workflows. Go to import, um, paste the URL for the workflow here, and that's it. Now we're being redirected to the list of workflows, and hopefully the workflow has imported successfully. All right, there we go. So the workflow is called select first and lines. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at this one. Okay, cool. Um, so it's a very, very simple workflow. You have an input data set here. And then you run the select first tool on that particular input data set. And it, you probably, maybe you know this tool. I mean, it just literally takes the first lines from the data set. And you can put the number of lines um, that you want to take from the beginning right here. So that's great. And if you run the workflow, it'll just do that one thing. But maybe you want to parameterize this. Um, so what you can do there is you can add a simple input used for workflow logic. So this is the kind of workflow parameters I'm mostly talking about here. And um, this is a number. So it's a whole number. It's an integer uh, value. So um, instead of a text, let's say uh, we use an integer here. Um, and let's say um, number, oops number of lines to cut. We just label this so we know what it is. Um, let me pull up the uh, tutorial right here to make sure that I'm not doing something else. Yep. Um, okay, so what we're doing next is we go back to the select first um, tool. We click on this little uh, button right here. So if you hover over it, it says add connection to module. That's what we want to do. And you see here this, um, this little input field input box um, has appeared. And now we can connect the parameter we just added right here. So that's, that's it basically. Um, I can just briefly show you that we have different parameter types. Um, you can select the currently available ones by clicking here and you get a little select field. And also um, the editor will be smart enough to know that, okay, you can't put a text parameter to an integer uh, value. So let's flip that back to integer. I'm gonna pull up the training materials again. All right. 
Okay. Uh, so that's it. We saved the workflow. Um, and we can run it. Actually, in fact, we need an import data set. And of course, we should also name our history. So let's say um, workflow parameter tutorial. Let's add a training tag. All right. And uh, we need to add the bit of data. So you have two ways to do this through the upload button or here through the workflow run form. You can also click on the upload button. It's the same thing. Um, and then I believe we were supposed to paste text. Yep. So let's copy that right here. Does that work? I think so. Um, okay, pull that menu back up, upload. Uh, so we're just pasting our data here. Um, yeah. Um, this is text data. I mean, you don't have to set this, but I'm going to do it. All right, so we can close this. Um, while this is still uploading, you can't. Um, select the data set here, but quick and dirty trick is you can also just drag it up here. And then you can decide the number of lines you want to take from the beginning. Um, I don't know, did the tutorial say how many lines we want? Oh, it doesn't actually run the workflow, but we can do this just to show you that it actually works also. Uh, so let's say, I mean, how many lines does this file even have? 16. All right, cool. So let's say take the first five. And there we go. I mean, this is the uh, workflow submission screen here. Uh, it says we successfully started running this workflow. Um, we got our parameter here. Uh, we got our inputs here. And you can see the individual steps here. And now we wait. Shouldn't be very long. In fact, um, yeah, the select first tour is already running. Uh, so if we go on that step, we can look at the job. Hey, it turned OK. Right here, we see the number of lines is five. And if in the history we expand this, it also nicely says five lines now. Let's take a look. Yep, that's five lines. All right, um, let's move on. So this is the, the most basic thing, like if you wanna select text or integers. Um, maybe noteworthy uh, to mention is that you can connect text parameters to select fields. Um, so for instance, if you wanna select a, a reference genome, you can use a text parameter to connect. All right, um, so next up, something else. Um, often you want to add a parameter that the user can set, but it's actually embedded in a larger context. So for instance, um, yeah, I mean, this example uh, assumes that you're familiar with uh, regular expressions. Um, so say you have this regular expression um, that should replace uh, the word foo um, in the word foo bar um, and replace uh, foo um, with something else um, and then connect that with a uh, bar. Um, oh, sorry, I, I, I said this wrong. So it, it takes the word foo and then just appends bar. I mean, there are better ways to do this, but it's, it's just an example to show you how you can uh, take a parameter and add additional things to it. All right, so this time we're creating a new workflow. Um, so let's do that. So my connection is not that great. It's all taking a little bit. There we go. Um, so let's call that my silly regex workflow. 
you should definitely give that a better name. All right, there we go. Um, just a word. I mean, you want to fill this in usually if you like make your cool, fancy workflow. You can add who you are and the license, but we don't need this for, for the example right here. So we have an input data set. Um, let's just say a text input file. Um, we have a parameter. So we want to say, let's say append this value. Again, I mean, these labels are not necessary. I don't think they're part of the tutorial, but I like to do this because it makes it easier to follow what's going on. Okay, let's switch back to tutorial. So we added the input data set, we added the uh, simple input. Okay, um, then we have a tool that can take different um, values and just put them together. It's really quite, I mean, it's very simple and very powerful. Um, once you gather experience in creating complex workflows, it'll be more obvious why this is very cool. Um, I, I, I still hope you will understand. All right. Um, so that's an expression tool. You can find it here. So this is the compose text parameter value from parameters. All right. And so this has this little thing here where you can um, add components or parts of the, the parameter that we want to compose. Um, so um, we need to build basically the input field for the find and replace regex tools. So there are two inputs. One is um, the regex itself and the other is the replacement field. So we, we just build up the, the first field. So it basically needs to go bracket um, thing we're looking for in a capture group. I mean, that, that's, that's the, the bracket. Um, so yeah, I mean, we need to basically prefix it with an opening bracket and a closing bracket. So let's do that. So basically we need three things, right? So we need this one, the opening bracket, we need the closing bracket. And this one here, the user is supposed to um, add. Um, so let's do that. Okay. Um, and then we need the regex find and replace tool, can find it under text manipulation. Up, up, up. And there we go. Up. Um, yeah, so the first thing is the input data set. So that's, that's this right here. Um, yep, then we got to click on insert check. And the find regex is the one we want to replace. Um, so again, we have to click here on add connection to module. Um, and we're connecting this one. So um, also I skipped glossed over this, but you can select here what the type of the parameter is. Um, so this is text, so it matches, so that's fine. We can connect it. Um, we don't really care about this output, but um, I think, oh yeah, we need to put the replacement in, um, which is the um, backslash one bar. What that means is take the first captured thing, put it here and then follow up with bar. Um, yeah, and I always like to, also label the outputs I'm interested in. So this is the um, replaced text. Well, let's say replaced data set. All right, let's save this. Have a look at the training material. Are we really doing what we're supposed to do? Yep. Cool, and then we can run it. All right, and again, the uh, tutorial tells us what we, um, what the input data set should be like. Um, yep, just 
upload the data set uh, with the contents. Wonder. Let's wonder for those not speaking German. Oh. Again, let's put the text type. Doesn't hurt to do it. Um, and let's get going. And so um, we wanted to replace Wunder with Wunderbar. Um, so if we type here bar as the value to append, it should hopefully do that. All right, so same submission screen. Um, we can already see the parameters. Um, we have our input here. The outputs will appear as they're being created. Yep, we've got this little output section here. It's a text file. I mean, we can also open up here um, the data set information. You see a little bit more than you're seeing because I'm administrator on this instance, but um, yeah, I mean, we see our parameter that we composed, which is the opening bracket, bar, closing bracket, and the replacement. And this shouldn't take too long. I guess it'll be done pretty soon. All right, that didn't work. Um, what went wrong? Oh, um, yes, of course. Um, I should have looked at the tutorial. Uh, our input data set here is Wunder. That's great. We're looking for bar, which isn't there. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> I guess I should just read the tutorial better. Um, so the problem was that as the parameter, and you can see that in the workflow invocation I showed you earlier, the parameter I used was not the right one, right? Um, it should be wonder and not bar. So let's do it again. And we want to select the thing we just uploaded, which was this one here, number three. <clears throat> Wonder, can check the parameters. That's, that's not the value we want to append. Um, oops. <laughs> it's actually the value we want to replace. But there you go. Mm. I mean, let's edit this while uh, the workflow is running. Let's say replace. So there we go. That is much more correct. Yep. So you see the label here got updated. 
it's still running. While it's running, we can ha maybe have a look at uh, the workflow invocations page, which is um, a list of your current workflow runs. Um, so we see here this one that's currently running. The parameter didn't get updated because this was the previous run. Um, so the label is still wrong. If we'd run the workflow again, you'd get the proper label. All right, maybe let's move on. Um, this is going to finish. Um, yeah, um, let's move to the last part. I think, I kind of think this is the most exciting one. Um, so very often you do some things in a workflow and then the next step depends on a specific value that you calculated in the workflow. Um, so you may want to, for instance, normalize the values in a data set based on something else that the workflow did. Um, you want to determine whether the workflow should do this or should do that, um, depending on, on whether you're doing, we're dealing with a certain type of data set or another data set. You want to do quality control, and maybe you have a binary value pass quality control or did not pass quality control. All this sort of things um, you can do, um, but if it's just written out in a data set in your history, you can't really you know, automatically do something with it. You would have to take the value and paste it into another text field or in another uh, numeric field. Um, and what you want to do actually is take the value from that data set and put it back into the parameter. So. Yeah, that's, that's what we can do. Um, so let's do this. So this is um, what, what we're going to construct here is a workflow um, that operates on numeric values in a data set. Um, it sums up everything in the first column of the data set. Um, so you get the total sum in the data set. And then it's going to use the uh, data mesh. Um, operations and tabular data tool. Uh, nope, it's, it's going to use the compute and expression on every row tool uh, to take the value in the first column and divide it by the total sum of the data set. So you get fractional values and if you um, add up the fractional values, you'll end up back at one. Um, all right, so let's, let's do that. And um, yeah, in the meantime, this is also finished. Yay, we've got the V1 number there. All right, so let's um, move on. i got to create another workflow. Um, let's say cal calculate fractions. All right, so again, uh, we need an input data set. Um, um, what else do we need? Uh, we need the data mesh tool, uh, which is in the data mesh section. So this this one, operations on tabular data. Um, we're not doing any grouping. The only thing we want to do is we want to sum column one. Let's connect those two things together. Um, we don't care about the output here. And um, I, we need to read the value. Uh, so this is under expression tools, parse parameter value from data set. Um, let's connect that up. All right. Um, so this is taking like the total sum. And then uh, we want to do this compute and expression on every row. Uh, compute, compute, compute and expression on every row. There we go. All right, so the first thing is the data set that is the input. So that's um, this one right here. And the expression, so that's kind of the tricky part, right? Um, oh, 
right? Um, so what we want to do is basically C1 divided by the you know total value in this data set. So let's say 1,200. Except, I mean, obviously we don't know this, and uh, but that's the whole point. Um, so this is a single text field right here. Um, so the challenge is we need to create this field. And as you should remember from the previous uh, part of the tutorial, we can compose this text value. So let's go right ahead and do that. So we need to add um, the compose text parameter tool as well. And what we want to do here is we want the first component that just says C1 um, divided. And then uh, this right here, uh, we want to read from a file. Um, actually, I mean, we are reading the parameter from the file here. We're passing it in uh, to right here. And then we can uh, replace the expression here with a calculated value from here. Uh, we don't care about these outputs. The only thing we really care is uh, this right here. Um, let's, let's give it a label. This is, um, sorry, we wanna label the output, not the step. Um, so let's call this, um, yeah. Um, fractional values. Okay, let's save this. Go ahead and run it. Oh yeah, and of course we need um, input data again. Um, let's see what the tutorial is suggesting. All right, so you see, I mean, we wanna sum these up and then divide each value here by the total which would give us fractional values. Uh, so let's upload it here. Yep. All right. So this is still uh, being processed on the server, but let's just go ahead and do this. Um, so there are no user-defined um, values here, right? So we, we calculate the parameter we wanna add in the last step. Uh, but the user doesn't have to enter anything. So we can just go right ahead and run it. And the workflow will actually only start scheduling once the input data set is ready. So that's kind of what you, you saw right here. All right, so first up, um, data mesh is doing its thing. Um, and you can look at the individual steps as well here. Uh, so that's just a single output data set um, that's currently still running. You can see the jobs here. Um, nothing too interesting right now. Yeah, and then um, let me maybe mention that uh, we just did one um, data set here. We we'd only write a single value, um, but this tool works like, um, so the parse parameter value works like any other tool in Galaxy. Um, so that means you can also run it on a collection. And, you know, if your text file, um, if you have a text file with 100 values, you can split that into a collection with 100 data sets where each value um, is a single line um, within the collection. And then you can try 100 values at once. Um, this is totally possible. All right. Okay, so... Almost done here. Okay, so our output has finally been scheduled. It appeared here. Um, again, we can look at the 
data set information here, which should already list uh, the parameters that were used. Yep, and then we see it here, C1 divided by a big number. Um, and if we look at the data set itself, um, yep, we see uh, big number, small number, these are the fractions. They should sum up to one. I need that as an exercise for the reader to verify. So yeah, with that, I hope you see the value in using uh, workflow parameters. They really make it easy to use your workflows in many different situations, not having to copy and paste everything or hard code values. Um, so that, yeah, should make it much easier for everybody to go use workflows. So I hope you like this. Bye.